Hey, welcome back to Sharpen. I'm Dustin Valkama, and today we're going to be talking about how I make my portraits pop in Photoshop using Macro Dodge and Burn. Now, if you're already familiar with Macro Dodge and Burn, you know that there's a million different ways to complete any individual task in these softwares. I'm going to show you mine. Let's go ahead and get started. All right, here we are in Photoshop, ready to make this portrait pop. A lot of the pop here comes from lighting, and if you're not really familiar with the lighting processes or techniques to get you to this point, go ahead and check out the rest of the videos that we have here on Sharpen. There are plenty that talk about light and the different methods that you can use to achieve these looks. In order to start the macro dodge and burn process, let's go ahead down to our adjustment layers, and I'm going to choose a solid color adjustment layer and we'll go ahead here and make this layer white go ahead and click ok and now this is going to be our dodge adjustment layer so let's go ahead and name that there we go and then we can also select our layer mask and invert it and lastly we can go ahead and set our blend mode for this layer to soft light so let's go ahead and set up the burn we're going to do this in pretty much the same way We'll head down to our adjustment layers and we can make sure that we select solid color and then we'll have a black solid color adjustment layer invert our layer mask and then we can double click and name this burn so what we're going to do now is create a curves adjustment layer now with this curves adjustment layer we can go ahead and grab our midtones and we're going to raise these up quite a bit and for this adjustment layer, let's go ahead and name this eyes. There we go. And then we can go ahead and duplicate this layer. And then we can name this one shine. So now we have an eye pop and a shine adjustment layer that we can work with as well. So what we're going to do is go ahead and hide our shine layer for a moment. We can select our eye pop adjustment layer. Now with the layer mask selected, go ahead and invert that. And then we can turn our shine back on. Now with the shine layer, before we go ahead and invert this adjustment layer, what we can do is actually double click to enter our blend options. Now with our blending options open, we're actually going to use the blend if section here on the bottom. We'll use the underlying layer. We can start with the black point and go ahead and raise this. And we can see that that is starting to remove the effects from the shadows on the underlying layer. And now if you go ahead and press the alt or option key, this is going to allow you to break this handle for the blend if. And so what we can see here is that our skin is starting to look a little bit, maybe moisturized or it has a slight shine to it. And so we can adjust this a little bit later. This is something that I kind of finish off the process of my edits with, but it allows us to have this process set up so that we can go ahead and just tweak it later without having to repeat all of this. So let's go ahead and click OK. Now at this point, we can go ahead and select our shine adjustment layer, Control or Command I to invert. And now we end up with our regular image. So let's go ahead and make sure that we have our layers set up here. So it looks like our burn layer we still need to set to soft light. So let's go ahead and do that. And our curves adjustments layers can remain standard. Now we'll select the dodge layer, select the shine layer holding shift. So it selects all four layers here and go ahead and create a group. And we'll name this group dodge and burn. There we go. So now this is where we're going to work within a non-destructive process and it makes life quite a bit easier. So selecting our dodge layer with the layer mask, we'll make sure that we have a soft round brush selected here. And our flow is around 14% with pen pressure sensitivity on. All we're going to do at this point is go ahead and zoom into our image a bit and we'll make sure that we have white as our foreground color and we can just now add to this layer mask and brighten up these areas on our subject's face. Now this isn't quite a micro dodge and burn so I'm not really focused so much on getting some of these details brightened and evened completely. On the macro side it's more about contouring and really accentuating the bright and dark areas. So the areas that I'm going to hit here are going to be right along the cheekbones, right on the top of the nose here, and then let's grab the other cheekbone, 
and I'm kind of painting in somewhat of a triangle pattern just to follow the flow there. And if you overshoot, you can go ahead and click X to switch to black as your foreground color and then continue painting to remove. Right on the lips here, I'm going to dodge those a bit, maybe even on top of ways. There we go. Down on the chin, we can help this pop a bit. And now we can go ahead right to the outside of the eyelid area here and just kind of brighten those up a tad. All right, so now if we go ahead and we just turn this layer off and on, we can see the effects that we've just created. And this is giving us the beginnings of a really nice dimensional portrait. Now, what I'll also do is actually head into clothing that my subject is wearing. And I'm just going to paint right along some of the highlights that we have here and just brighten these up a bit. And if you hit areas like this that are already quite hot, you don't have to go too heavy handed with it. And I'm just going to help accentuate the light direction that we already have here from our lighting. Now, usually once we get to hair, and I know that there's not a lot of hair in this portrait, but once we get to hair, usually what I'll do is just look for the natural sheen or the highlight from our lighting. And I'll just touch those areas a little bit. And there we go. Let's go ahead and turn this off and on and we can already see these effects. It's looking pretty cool. As I'm continuing down other areas, like the straps on her shoulder here, I may just go ahead and use a little bit more of a broad stroke method. And this is just going to help get some of that lighting accentuated and not really push everything too far. And so we'll go ahead along the staff here, areas that are a bit more shiny or metallic, I'll usually go a little bit heavier handed with it just to help those pop off the image. And then we can continue accentuating some of the lighting. Now it looks like we have a pretty good set here for the Dodge. Let's go ahead and turn this on and off again. Now let's go ahead and select the layer mask of our burn layer. This is going to allow us to go in and start to accentuate more of the shadow areas in the face and really help push that contouring. So what I'm going to be doing is focusing here a little bit on the cheekbones and I'm pressing ever so slightly not to push too much into that right away because we can accentuate this a bit later. Now, right on the outside of the eye here, maybe down a bit towards the side of the nose, underneath the nose is usually an area that's good to hit. And then I'll go ahead here right underneath the lip and we can start to really push some of the shadows, maybe a little bit here down underneath the chin. Okay, so now we'll go ahead here, add a little bit to the other side of the cheek towards the inside of the eye there for the other. And now we can maybe do one quick pass here over the eyebrows to help those stick out just a little bit more. It gives it a bit more of a dramatic feel. As I'm starting to look at the rest of the image, I'm just going to accentuate some of the shadows that we already have here. And so we're going to go ahead and just pull some of this light in from the sides, maybe up and underneath her goggles, maybe really push some of the shadow underneath here. It's going to help that blend in a bit better instead of just being such a muddy area. And now we can focus down towards the bottom of her costume here. Now for the straps, we can go ahead and accentuate the bottom area of the strap here. There we go. Kind of broad strokes overall here will do the trick. And now towards the outside or the back side here. And I feel like that will work well. I'm not so concerned with these areas at which the burn layer has actually gone over. We'll take care of that in a moment. Now on the other arm here, we can just go ahead and maybe accentuate some of the shadows that we already have and start to push those just a little bit darker. If you feel like you've gone a bit too far, I can go ahead and we'll just use black instead of white and make sure we correct some of those areas. There we go. Maybe a little bit more dimension here in the staff. So when I find natural shadows, something like this here, or it's really a lack of reflection, but nonetheless, what we'll do is we'll just decrease our brush size and paint right along that natural line that's already there. Okay, so at this point, let's go ahead and turn off our dodge and burn layer as a whole. 
and we can see here how much dimension this is already added to the portrait. It's making it a bit more serious. So what we're going to do here is actually make sure that all of our dodging and burning are sticking to our subject and not really overspilling the background too much. So an easy way to do that is actually to select our background layer inside of our properties panel. We can go ahead down to the bottom and we'll see that we have select subject quick action. So go ahead and click on select subject. That's going to automatically select our subject from the background. And then we can go ahead and select our dodge and burn layer and we can create a layer mask. Okay, so all is right with the world. Now, one of the things that I really wanna do here is create an eye pop or really kind of make some light hit that iris. Then we're also going to add a little bit of skin shine and start to balance some of these adjustments that we've made. So let's go ahead and start with the eye pop. We'll select the adjustment layer here and we can move right into the eyes, make our brush size quite a bit smaller, and we can start to paint with these effects, and we can turn this off and on and see now that we have just a little bit of a hit there. Let's see if we can pull that a little bit further, and we can do the other as well. Now, if you're not getting too much of an effect there, we can always select our adjustment layer and push those midtones up just a bit further. And we can see now how those are starting to work. All right, so immediately, that's gonna be quite harsh. It's very easy to go ahead and just tone those down a little bit. So we'll select the fill, and we can tone those down some. Now I feel like that's a good spot for us to sit. And what we can do now is focus on our shine layer. So if we go ahead and we hold the shift key and click on our layer mask for shine, we'll see that now we have a little bit of adjusting to do. We'll double click our shine layer, bring up those blending options again. And now we can start to adjust the black points by raising those up and we can see here how this is really starting to crunch down some of the details. And now we can also take the other side and bring that up just a bit higher. We don't wanna remove all of the shine. And this is where my focus is, is right here in this area and making sure that those don't get too hot. So we can already see that on the nose, it's going to be a bit much. And so we can go ahead and adjust these down a ways. I think somewhere right about there is going to work out well for us. Go ahead and we can click OK. So we'll turn on our layer mask, clicking on it. And now on this shine layer mask, we can use our brush tool again. And now we can really finesse exactly where these effects are going to take place. So I'll go ahead and I'll bring my flow up here a bit higher. So that's a little bit easier to get some progress here. There we go. We'll get some nice shine here. And now for the rest of the image, we can still really make some of this pop with the same shine. And because now we're using the pen pressure sensitivity, we don't really have to paint too hard with it. We can just give it a little bit of love in certain areas and that's going to work out quite well for us. Maybe just a little bit on her hands here. This is going to help add a little bit of dimension. So I feel like we have a good start there. Now, at this point, let's go ahead and take a look at our work overall. This is one thing that I like to do before and after, before, after, before, after, and we can see that we have a really nice kind of pop to the image. We've added a lot of nice detail to it. We're getting quite a bit more of a contour that we didn't previously have. We can always go ahead and drop our opacity of some of these layers and really start to bring them together. So I'm dropping the shine. I'm dropping the burn layer just a little bit here. Maybe do the same thing with the dodge and we can really start to rein this in. And at the end of the day, we can turn it off before and after and it's working out great. All right, now we have a good looking image. Let's go ahead and create an action for this so we don't have to repeat this process every single time we wanna retouch an image. Now, what we'll do is go ahead and delete our dodge and burn group. We're going to head up to our actions panel. So we can head up to window and then down to actions. And with our actions panel open, we'll head down to create a new action. We can go ahead and name this new action 
D and B for dodge and burn, whatever you'd like to call it, and click record. Now with this process started, we'll head straight down to create a new adjustment layer, solid color. We can make this white, click OK. We can rename to dodge, and we'll go ahead and invert our layer mask. Now we can repeat this process, solid color, black. We can invert our layer mask, go ahead and name this burn. And now we can set both of these layers to the soft light blend mode. Select our burn layer, head back down to our adjustment layers, create a curves adjustment layer, maybe close our action panel there for a moment. Curves adjustment layer, name this iPop. Now we'll take our mid tones in our properties panel and we can raise those up quite a bit until we see the irises really start to take some light there. And now we can select our layer mask and invert it. And what we'll do here is go ahead and create another curves adjustment layer. We can name this one shine, spelling's hard today. <laughs> and we can take these midtones and raise those up as well. And that's going to be what we'll use to have a nice shine. Now what we'll do here is double click our shine layer, open up our blending options. There we go. And now with the underlying layer, we're going to start to bring this down until where we're starting to lose some of the effect here in the shadows. Now alter option, click this handle and drag one of them off to the right. And this is going to give us a nice shine. And we can go ahead and start to work with this just a little bit. We don't have to go too far because we are going to dodge and burn under this first anyway but having this set here will be a good place for you to start from. We'll make the bottom handle maybe somewhere around midway and then we can split the difference with the dark handle on the right. Go ahead and click OK, select our layer mask and we can invert that. And now what we can do is go ahead and select our dodge layer, hold down shift and select burn, eye pop, shine, and then we can create a new group double click to rename the group and we can call this D and B for dodge and burn. And now what we can do is actually create a layer mask on the dodge and burn layer based off of our subject selection like we did previously and just do this automatically. So what we'll do here is we'll go ahead and select our background layer and we can head down to select subject in our properties panel. Now once that's selected, head back up to our dodge and burn group and we can click to create a layer mask, which is going to give us a layer mask now that's going to mask out all of our dodge and burn effects away from the background so that we're not affecting those areas. Now with our layer mask here in place, let's go ahead and open up our actions panel again and then press the stop button here, which is going to stop and create the full action for us. So now it's ready to be used. So we can go ahead and test this by heading up to the top of our action, we can select our dodge and burn action. And let's go ahead and delete our dodge and burn group. With our action selected, we can click the play button and see how everything comes together. And there we go. Let's go ahead and open up our dodge and burn group. And we'll see that we have all of our layers here intact and ready to be executed upon. All right, we've made it to the end of how to make portraits pop in Photoshop using macro dodge and burn. This is just one way to do it, but it's definitely a good technique to help sharpen your tool set so that you can start to produce better images faster. Now, as you start to use this technique and possibly the one here specifically that we did today, make sure to tag me on Instagram at Dustin Volkema. I'm very excited to see what you all do with this. Now, as always, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. I will see you on my next video here on Sharpen.